a ghost population in Baja around 9,000 years ago, is an early Pacific coastal people likely descended from the first Californians who hugged the shore while the mainland burned. They left a genetic trace in some early South Americans before later waves largely replaced them. The idea is that an early coastal group, probably related to the first people moving down the Pacific coast, survived along Baja California and the Gulf of California until at least 9,000 years ago. By the early Holocene, some of their genetic signals appeared in South America, especially ancient Brazil and Panama. Later movements, northward from Mesoamerica and southward from Arctic subarctic groups, swamped most of it, but a trace remains. La Brea woman lived in what is now the Los Angeles Basin at the very end of the Pleistocene or the dawn of the Holocene, about 12,000 to 11,700 years ago. She's the only known human skeleton recovered from the famous La Brea Tar Pits, a place better known for Ice Age animals trapped in asphalt. Her bones were once thought to be much older, but careful radiocarbon work on collagen now shows she lived long after the main wave of wildfires that swept the region around thirteen and a half thousand years ago. By her time, the climate was warming. The great Pleistocene lakes inland were beginning to shrink, and the coastal plain was becoming drier and more fire-prone, but still supported humans who had adapted to this shifting landscape. La Brea woman represents a remnant of those early maritime or coastal adapted peoples who persisted after the first pioneers. She lived thousands of years after the initial southern Native American settlers reached the Pacific coast, and not long before the genetic models placed the great admixture of ancestry into Mesoamerica. Her presence shows that people were still established in coastal southern California even after the late Pleistocene fires, sea level rise, and climatic swings. She stands as a late survivor of the ancient coastal tradition that fed the genetic reservoir along the Pacific margin, the same reservoir that would later contribute ancestry southward into Mexico and eventually send new waves of people north again into California during the mid-Holocene. Ancient DNA has transformed our understanding of how the first Americans moved and interacted along the Pacific coast. For many years, scientists believed that a single wave of people came from Siberia, moved rapidly through the continent, and then spread out without much later mixing. Genetic evidence now shows a far more complicated story. One of the most important findings is the discovery of an unsampled ancestral ghost population known as Eupop A. This population split from other Native American lineages very early, sometime between 30,000 and 22,000 years ago but it did not disappear. Instead, it persisted along the Pacific margin and became a hidden thread in later peoples. Around 9,000 years ago, this ancestry seems to have played a major role in reshaping the human map of California, Baja California, and northern Mexico. When researchers sequenced ancient genomes from the Americas, they discovered that a simple model of one north-south migration could not explain all the patterns. The early skeleton from Anzic in Montana, the Spirit Cave individual in Nevada, and the Lagoa Santa people in Brazil all belong to what is called the Southern Native American branch, which split from Northern Native Americans after the first entry into the continent. Yet when geneticists studied present-day people in Southern Mexico, they found that their DNA could not be explained by Southern Native American ancestry alone. The best model required a second stream of ancestry from an ancient branch that diverged long before the split between northern and southern groups. The timing of this mixture was estimated at about eight to 9,000 years ago in the early Holocene, long after the first pioneering hunters had spread south, but before the great agricultural civilizations emerged. The idea that a distinct early lineage survived along the Pacific was strengthened by later work on ancient DNA from California and northern Mexico. Scientists sequenced dozens of individuals from the Channel Islands and coastal California, dating back as far as 7,400 years. And they also studied ancient remains from Baja California and north-central Mexico. The earliest Channel Island and Santa Barbara people carried a genetic signature closely related to the first southern Native American settlers. They seem to preserve the legacy of those initial maritime migrants who had travelled down the Pacific coast at the end of the Ice Age. 
Their ancestry connected them not only to Anzic and Spirit Cave, but also, in deeper ways, to early South Americans such as the Lagoa Santa people. Around 5,200 years ago, this stable picture began to change. Genetic data show that people from northwestern Mexico and Baja California moved northward into central and southern California. One individual from the Monterey Bay region, who lived about 5,200 years ago, already carried a large fraction of ancestry related to these Mexican and Baja groups. Over the following millennia, this southern influence increased, especially in the Channel Islands and southern coastal California. By the time of the more recent prehistoric period, nearly half of the ancestry in the southern islands came from populations rooted in Baja California and northwestern Mexico. These same movements appear to be linked with the early spread of the uto aztecan language family long before the arrival of maize agriculture. The Baja people themselves were not newcomers at that time. Ancient DNA shows that Baja groups were already a mixture. They contained a very old coastal lineage that connected back to the first maritime settlers of California, and they also had ancestry from the interior of northwestern Mexico. This older coastal component fits the genetic profile predicted for the ghost population, a branch that separated from other Native Americans very early and lingered along the Pacific margin for thousands of years. Although no skeleton yet directly provides a genome from a nine- or ten-thousand-year-old person in Baja, the patterns seen in later individuals can only be explained if such a population existed. The Channel Island ancestry, which links to both early South Americans and the later Baja mixture, appears to be the best surviving proxy for that ghost population. Environmental history helps explain why this ancient coastal group endured and why it might have moved southward around 9,000 years ago. At the end of the Ice Age, sea levels were still about 75 to 80 meters lower than today, and the Channel Islands were joined into a single large landmass known as Santa Rosi. This world began to change quickly. As ice sheets melted, the sea rose, fragmenting islands and cutting off easy connections to the mainland. Inland California became hotter and drier, and chaparral fires swept through the Los Angeles basin. Large, pluvial lakes that had once supported hunters in Nevada and the Mexican Plateau started to shrink. For people who had relied on rich kelp forests and coastal wetlands, the safest and most productive path may have been to move south along the shore, following familiar marine resources into Baja and further into Mesoamerica. Genetic models suggest that this is when the ghost ancestry entered the Mesoamerican heartland, mixing with southern Native American descendants who had arrived earlier. Coastal shell middens and camps such as Punta Santa Elenita and Isla Chedros in Baja show marine exploitation. Later in the Holocene, the movement reversed. By about 5,000 years ago, people with ancestry rooted in Baja and northwestern Mexico began moving north into California. This wave brought new genetic signatures into the Channel Islands and the coastal mainland. It also likely carried languages that would become the uto aztecan family. The northward expansion happened long before farming and maize cultivation, showing that hunter-gatherers themselves reshaped the population structure and cultural map. These mid-Holocene migrants did not erase the older coastal lineage. Instead, they mixed with it, leaving California's prehistoric peoples as a blend of early southern Native American heritage, deep ancestry from the ancient Pacific refuge, and newer northwestern Mexican input. This shows how the Pacific coast acted both as a refuge and a highway. Early southern Native Americans established themselves there before 13,000 years ago. A deeply divergent lineage persisted in this zone, isolated from the main continental interior for millennia. Around 9,000 years ago, as seas rose and climates shifted, these coastal survivors contributed their genes to populations in Baja and Mesoamerica, helping to form the ancestry seen today in groups such as the Mixe. Centuries later, new waves flowed back north along the same coast, bringing Mexico-related ancestry and likely languages into California. The result is a picture of constant adaptation rather than a single one-way migration. People stayed near the sea when the interior burned and dried. They moved south when their islands shrank and new opportunities opened along the Baja Peninsula.
They moved north again when cultural and demographic pressures shifted. Through it all, the ghost lineage acted as a hidden thread, tying together the first pioneers, the early Holocene coastal refugees, and later expansions that shaped the genetic landscape of Western North America. Even without a sequenced 9,000-year-old Baja skeleton, the genetic echoes of that ancient population remain clear in the DNA of later Californians, Bajans, and Mesoamericans. This understanding challenges earlier models that imagined the Americas filled quickly by a single, uniform founding group. Instead, it shows that coastal California and Baja were dynamic centers where old lineages survived and later reshaped wide regions. It also shows that the early maritime settlers who left places like the Channel Islands were not just a dead end, but a continuing force. Their genetic legacy is seen in both directions, southward into Mesoamerica at the dawn of the Holocene and northward back into California thousands of years later. The ghost lineage, once only a statistical ghost in genetic models, now emerges as a real people whose migrations wove the Pacific coast into a complex and enduring human network. Now check out these other videos on ancient Native Americans and other people.